welcome back to the DoD Risk Management Framework video series. I'm Mike Redman, getting you through everything you need to know to fully implement the Risk Management Framework within a DoD environment. In this section, we're going to deal with the Risk Management Framework roles and responsibilities. Throughout this chapter, we will gain and understand how to assign the correct roles in the RMF process and perform the responsibilities associated with your RMF role, as well as be able to identify and explain the RMF roles to your colleagues. If you're studying for the ISC squared cap examination, management is ultimately responsible for security across the enterprise. RMF identifies new management roles with direct responsibilities for enterprise security. As we look at the hierarchical design of the risk management framework, it starts with the head of the agency or the CEO. Now, understanding that the DOD really doesn't have a CEO, uh, the equivalent of course, would be the president. We also have the risk executive function. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. The chief information officer, information owner or steward, the senior information security officer, authorizing official, authorizing official designated representative, common controls provider, the information system owner, the information system security officer, the information security architect, the information security engineer, the information control assessor, as well as the security control assessor representatives and the security control assessor validators. Starting with the head of the agency, it is generally the highest level senior official. Again, the president it has the overall responsibility for information and information systems, uh, security integrated with the strategic and operational processes, as well as establishing the appropriate accountability, provides active support and oversees the monitoring aspects. You will find this exact same role within the DICAP process. Next is the risk executive function. This is not an individual person. It is collectively all those responsible for security within an organization, whether it's information security, cybersecurity, physical and environmental security, personnel security, everyone has a role to play within the risk executive function. Their job is to ensure that risk related considerations are organization wide, as well as consistent across the organization. They will coordinate with senior leadership to provide comprehensive approaches, develop a risk management strategy overall, facilitate the sharing of risk information and provide a forum to consider all risk sources. Next is the Chief Information Officer. The Chief Information Officer is the one who will designate the Senior Information Security Officer in the organization, will oversee the creation of information security policies, ensures adequately trained personnel, as well as assists senior officials with their security responsibility and allocates appropriate resources to meet those responsibilities. They are also ultimately responsible for all FISMA reporting. Next, we have the information owner or steward. This is the individual that authorized the specific information. They may or may not be the system owner. It is okay to have two separate. They are not mutually exclusive. However, the information steward is there to provide input to the information system owner and to advise of the rules of behavior for the specific information system. A single system may in fact contain multiple information owners. Next, the Senior Information Security Officer. Uh, this is the individual that carries out the CIO FISMA responsibilities. They are the primary liaison for the CIO to the organization's senior officials and possesses a professional qualification to do so. Generally, you'll find that this individual is the one that heads the office that conducts the FISMA reporting. That brings us to the authorizing official. Uh, they are the individual that formally assumes the risk and responsibility responsibility of the information system itself. They're there to oversee the budget for all requirements and are accountable for all security risks. They must be a senior management position. Now, that does not mean that they have to be executive management. There is no requirement within the NIST guidelines that the AO needs to be a flag level officer, just senior management. And in fact, within the DOD structure, that could be as low as 
as a GS-14. The AO is there to also approve the security plan and the POAM for the system, and keeping in mind that there may be multiple AOs within a single information system. The AO has the authority to delegate a representative for most all their functions, all of them with the exception of a final authorization decision. An AODR can coordinate and conduct the day-to-day -day security requirements and activities for the information system and even may prepare all the final documentation for final approval. Next, the common controls provider. I'm often asked, how do I find a common control? My answer is simple. Where your administrative control ends, when you can no longer control the input or output on that system administratively, that is being provided by a common control provider. That is how you identify the common controls versus the controls you, as the information system owner or the information security officer, are required to maintain. Next, the information system owner. Uh, this is often identified as the program manager. They serve as the focal point for the information system itself and are responsible for the information system throughout the system development life cycle from cradle to grave. Uh, they're there to address the operational interests of the user community for that information system and ensure compliance with information security requirements, uh, as well as develop and maintaining a system security plan and POAM, and they will also decide who has access to the system on some occasions. They are the primary point of contact for the controls assessor to remediate any identified deficiencies. Next, the information system security officer. They're there to ensure the appropriate security posture of the information system itself and serve as the principal advisor to the program manager and the AO. They're responsible for the day-to-day -day, uh, security operations of the system, including physical and environmental personnel and incident handling and security training and awareness. As you can tell, this individual often must be an expert in many fields. Otherwise, you would need to find multiple information system security officers to fill the four requirements. They're also there to help develop the policies and procedures for the organization's information systems and active system monitoring. The information security architect is there to adequately address security requirements in enterprise architecture, such as reference models, it serve as the liaison between the enterprise architect and the information system security engineer, and advise to senior officials as to the system boundary, assessing severity of specific deficiencies, organize and maintain the POAM and risk mitigation approaches as it pertains to that individual system. The information system security engineer is part of the development team. They employ security controls best practices. They work closely with the architect to ensure that there is no gap in total security. We often associate this with the DICAP IAO. Understand, looking at the pure definition of an information system security engineer, they're there to ensure that the requirements are properly integrated into information technology component products and information systems. That brings us to the Security Controls Assessor. Their primary responsibility is to conduct the System Security Plan Assessment. They're there to conduct control assessments to ensure that the implemented controls are acting and behaving as intended for that system. They provide assessment of all deficiencies and recommended corrective actions. The Controls Assessor will prepare a Final Security Assessment Report, or RAR, and the only requirement for the security assessor is independence. Now, to identify independence, it's a simple two-step process. They must be able to be an unbiased assessor and be able to provide an objective risk determination. They cannot have any vested interest in the success or failure of that particular information system. If you meet these two requirements, you can be a security controls assessor. Here's a chart of all the roles and responsibilities we've just spoken about and their alignment to the risk management framework process. In the next section, we'll deal with the risk analysis process.